let's go. Probably last year's most heated public debate topic, AI. Just for the record, AI is nothing new. It didn't just come out in the recent years. The first chatbot was created in 1966. The American Association of Artificial Intelligence was formed in 1979. Facebook and Twitter started using AI as part of their advertising algorithm as early as 2006, so pretty much from the beginning. Tools such as search engines or virtual assistants are basically pure AI and have been used in everyday lives for a while now. But <laughs> it wasn't until recent years when AI started gaining a little more traction. And at least from what I've seen, it is mostly due to the development and accessibility of the ChatGPT and OpenAI tools. In modern context, when someone mentions AI, it is usually this creative aspect of it that they mean, either creating text or text to image. And what got most interest in recent debate is mostly text to image models such as Doll E3, Sable Diffusion, Midjourney, all of the popular tools that people started using en masse. I don't even know what I'm saying. It started off as fun challenges with friends and it quickly turned into a cheap alternative for paying photographers, artists, creators, designers and illustrators. An alternative that also often sourced the images from the creators without crediting them. I don't know if you heard about this, but at the end of last year, a group of artists actually started a class action lawsuit against Stability AI, Midjourney, DeviantArt and Runway AI. So needless to say the visuals created by AI are already a subject of a massive controversy. So how is that in any way connected to history? I mean, girlies, you've been on this channel for a while now, everything is connected to history. The way we learn about history is very much visual. It's difficult for us to establish a timeline unless we have a clear image that we can connect it to. And that image is also coincidentally often fashion related. When we say 18th century or Marie Antoinette, the first image that pops into our head is maybe not French Revolution, but massive skirts, big hair, lace, high heels. When we say Elizabethan era, before we even think about the things that happened in the time, we see roughs. These visual symbols are often misread. Like people just associate wrong eras with the wrong images. I cannot count the number of times that I was wearing something 18th century and someone would come over and be like, oh look, Mary Poppins, or are you out of Green Gables? Darling, that's 20th century. That's not even close to what I'm wearing. But obviously for people that are not that much interested interested in the history of fashion, they just jump straight to the closest connection that they can find, which just happens to be two centuries apart, but I don't judge. Whether or not the particular visual signifiers that we have as a society of a particular era are actually accurate or not, it usually depends on a number of factors. How big of an interest is there in, the, in a particular period? How much media from the era we were exposed to? Was photography invented at the time? Or are we just basing our idea of the era on movies or paintings from the era? How popular the era is in literature or cinema? How present it is in pop culture? Sometimes popular media that are set in a particular time in history kind of distort our understanding of what a particular era looked like. It's difficult for our brains to comprehend the, all of the complexities of history. So we usually use shortcuts to label particular times, periods, places from the past. We like to think of the Victorian era as dark, death-obsessed and dirty. Even though not everyone back then was dressed in all black and slowly descending into madness in an arsenic-filled household, or we tend to think of 1920s as the age of flappers, champagne and Charleston, and it's never our first thought to imagine all of the social movements that were going around, recovering from a world war, na na na. And usually iconic media can be blamed for that. I mean, Gone with the Wind has forever romanticized our vision of the American Civil War. And it's an image that is so difficult to alter now. Uh, Jane Austen created a perfect cottagecore vision of early 19th century England, even though Europe at the time was continuously bloodied during the Napoleonic Wars. Some of the visions we have of history are slowly crumbling as we're paying more and more attention to the perspectives of mistreated or colonized minorities. Like when you think of 1950s and the first image that comes to your head is a beautifully dressed young woman who just left a shopping mall and she's carrying all those beautiful clothes. But when you think about how she then got on a segregated bus, 
It does not sound that idyllic anymore, does it? The grandeur of Victorian era mansions tastes different when you think about all of the stolen wealth that fueled it. I think it's one of the things about social media that actually has a positive influence on how we learn and experience history because everyone can share their perspective, everyone can share family experience or memories and it adds a layer of personal truth to some topics that are usually just described as places and dates. Of course it also makes our perception of history very subjective, but I think history in general is very subjective of course. However, we're coming back, we're, we're making a circle here, stay with me. However, one thing I do not like is the rise of historical misconceptions that could have been easily avoided. Listen, if someone in the 1920s wrote an academic dissertation on the Great Fire of London and it was full of historical myths, that makes sense. I mean, research was difficult back then and people were just repeating a lot of myths. But in the age where resources are more available than ever and you can check the authenticity of any historical fact you come up with, with a single click. It just doesn't make sense to me why there is a growing amount of misconceptions and straight up lies going around. A while ago, a reel showcasing the changes styles in fashion was circulating on social media. And if I had a dollar for every time I was sent that reel, I would have been long retired and uh, living in a cottage somewhere in Kent. It was sent to me like hundreds of times. I didn't get a dollar for every time I was sent the reel, but all I got was whiplash every time I saw it because the reel was using stable diffusion and none of the styles was actually correct. What's the point of creating historical content if you're not in fact showing history? You could collect actual historical styles and edit them together and you could probably use some sort of AI tool to morph them into one another or you could easily present the same reel with a caption here's an AI take on historical styles. Honestly that's fine, I wouldn't mind. But no, this is what primarily bugs me about AI takes on history. They are always presented as authentic. And that's just, that's just straight up lying and using people's gullibility. From my own observation, listen, I'm, not, I'm no AI specialist. I just say what I've seen. Um, from my observation, the prime platform for this sort of historical bullshit is Facebook. No offense, but Facebook is an aging platform. Have a look at any comment section and you'll find that it's a lot different to comment sections on YouTube or on Instagram or on TikTok. Facebook is turning into a wholesome haven for middle-aged people that are just looking for a place to relax. And I mean, slay, like, I'm all for it. You know, life is stressful. But it's also not a secret that Gen X and older generations sometimes have trouble navigating the internet and sifting out the truth. I mean, there is a reason that they are the ones that are always falling for the conspiracy theories, fake news, fake videos, deep fakes, all that stuff. They are just perhaps not the most up to date with modern technology and are not even aware of all the techniques that can be used to make them believe something. So they are unaware sometimes that the media that they're consuming may have been created using Photoshop, using deepfakes, or now just straight up invented from scratch by a text to image prompt. My Facebook feed at the moment is flooded with AI created images, be it historical or otherwise. And every time I see them, I'm looking at the comment section just out of curiosity to see if there is anyone that has caught up with the fact that it's not in fact real. And every time there is maybe like one or two comments pointing out that this is actually a little suspicious. Like maybe a two year old did not build this very advanced sculpture out of sand. Or perhaps this insane excavation site from 1920s that we have never ever seen before in our lives and would probably be one of the most famous historical sites of all time. Maybe it actually does not exist. What are the odds? <laughs> there is probably like a couple of people in the comments that do that and the rest of the reactions are overwhelmingly positive. There is millions of likes on each of these posts. I think a big part of why we are so ready to believe things like that is because we want them to be true. A lot of the times AI generated images show places or people that we have no visual record of or ethnicities and cultures that just don't have that visual heritage because it was destroyed or they were not allowed to use it or it was just not available at the time. These I must admit I understand more because sometimes there's just no alternative. Like if you don't have any family photos of course it would be nice to generate them using a computer and imagine what they might have looked like. And in those cases 
pieces are just little historical material that we can base our vision of. So it's not completely a lie because we don't actually know what it looked like. And also, let's face it, using modern tools to come up with what the past may have looked like is, again, nothing new. 19th century illustrations and paintings reimagining 18th century were definitely not accurate. And neither were 1950s paintings that were inspired by the Victorian era. The way we draw flappers nowadays also doesn't have anything to do with what people actually wore in the 1920s. Unless we directly copy the styles from the era, there is always a big chance that the imagery that we have created, even traditionally, will have little to do with actual history. I think my problem with this is that instead of filling out the niches, like instead of filling out the gaps that we don't have in, in our visual records, it's, it's beginning to push the actual historical imagery we already have. Using AI to create a hyper-realistic portrait of your great-grandfather, you do you, I don't care. But using AI to create a portrait of a Victorian lady that there is already thousands of and they're copyright free. What's the point? What's the point when there is already countless historical images available? And instead of learning what it actually looked like, we're getting a yassified version of history. My pet peeve with AI creating photos of people from the past mostly is that we are wasting a unique opportunity to look into the eyes of our ancestors and to see actual faces that existed back then. Faces that didn't know any sunscreen, faces that didn't know any Botox, faces that reflected the environment, a lifestyle that they were exposed to. And apart from the faces even, authentic photographs from the era allow you to see people's posture, stature, clothing choices that were also often very personal and were also a reflection of their environment, financial state, personal taste, life choices. All this additional information is lost on us when we only feed ourselves modern historical style images. So why do we do it? The superiority of AI-created imagery lies not only in the fact that it's cheap, because that doesn't really make sense in historical context, most of these people are long gone anyway and copyright doesn't even involve them, but it is also very flexible. When I look for historical material to illustrate my videos, I often struggle to find exactly what I'm looking for. I may find a nice painting of a lady sitting at a desk, but it is tempting to think that all it takes is a simple prompt and then you get an image of a blonde lady with one arm resting on the table writing a beautiful letter with a white quill pen and the ink accidentally spilling on her purple skirt as her little Pomeranian dog watches. You know what I mean? It's just, it is tempting to get exactly what you want and I think that's the big part of AI is we want to see those things and it's, it's just tempting to be able to get what you want instantly. It's like a reward. However, the price I would pay for using such an image in my video, even though it would match the context of the video perfectly, would be that I miss a perfect opportunity to highlight actual art from the era, expose my viewers to original techniques, authentic brush strokes, to seeing a dress that was given by the artist to the model specifically for this painting, the light that shone through the glass ceiling of the studio. And to me, as a person interested in history, those are the elements that make history and learning about history so vibrant and juicy. But it gets even worse because recently, um, you probably heard about this, OpenAI announced the release of their new text-to-video model, Sora. And one of the clips that they have shown on the official website as an example of what Sora is able to do is a clip of a Gold Rush era Californian town. At a first glance, it looks great. I mean, footage that would not be available otherwise and that would take dozens of hours to either create digitally or hundreds of thousands of dollars to shoot using a real life set and hundreds of extras. I mean, it is a steal if you're looking at it money-wise, but does it actually bring us closer to history? How does it improve our understanding of the era? Can it feature all the quirky details of an actual Californian town? Part of it could of course be improved over time, but it does feel pretty soulless, given that it's supposed to show history that the AI has never even studied. I think it feels a lot more rich when it's done by someone who's actually fascinated by the era and collecting information through various sources, be it historical texts, academic research, reading diaries, and then creating this vision in their head of what the era looked like. You know, like when movies do it. You can definitely tell when filmmakers carefully study the era that they are 
trying to portray. Historical movies just feel so much more full when they include details and easter eggs that show heavy research. Like this scene in Emma when she takes off her overshoes as she comes back home because that is what ladies of the era would be doing. They would wear overshoes to avoid mudding and dirtying their, their own shoes. Or how last year's Zone of Interest uses cold bluish highlights in its color grading because that's what European color photos from the era looked like. Now of course this could also all be done by AI, but AI is not creative. It will not come up with a whole philosophy holding the media together. It does not crave to awaken feelings in people, unlike artists. It could steal ideas and it could respond to prompts, that's for sure, but it's not going to come up with a fresh and new way to show history. So when we start relying on AI when talking about history, we're going to be sort of stuck in a shrinking circle of reheated ideas instead of expanding our understanding of the past. For example, ChatGPT heavily relies on Wikipedia, and we're using ChatGPT to write essays. So if those essays make it online and then ChatGPT sources them again, not only does it do a full circle, but it's basic level Wikipedia knowledge. So instead of coming up with fresh angles, we're sort of stuck recycling the same knowledge over and over. And knowledge that might not even be correct in the first place because Wikipedia has its weaknesses, a lot of them. If the same happens with visual content, we might get stuck in a loop of AI recycling AI created historical imagery and that will gradually get less and less related to the original historical context that it drew inspiration from. Now OpenAI claims to control AI created content in case the misinformation gets out of hand. We already know if such effort were indeed put in place they failed miserably because bruv not only are people not able to differentiate AI generated images from real historical ones but they also start questioning actual historical photos and videos claiming that they are AI generated. Things like female bodybuilders of the Edwardian era, a historical figure that has a surprisingly modern looking face, or just anything that seems a little out of the ordinary and perhaps is not a well-known historical fact, it is instantly a subject of people's suspicion. And I must admit, even though I think my my inner personal AI detector is working pretty well, like it's, it's calibrated, there are moments when I have to reverse search an image just to double check. And I'm someone who looks at historical images on a daily basis. For now, the biggest giveaway to me is the inaccurate historical costume and the overall roundness of shapes, but we've already seen the massive progress that AI generated images have made over the past few years, so that might also be improved and we will probably soon get to a point when it's indistinguishable to the human eye, even to a trained one. And it is honestly quite scary not only in terms of education and learning history as a form of leisure, but also in terms of historical misconceptions that still have an impact nowadays and still are a subject of public debate. Like imagine countries with differing views of the past or countries that have failed to acknowledge their wrongdoings from the past, using AI generated images to prove their point or claiming that real historical proof of, of committing atrocities is in fact fake and AI generated. Simple as that. This sort of manipulation could easily lead to even more conflict than we're already dealing with. Which is why I personally think that it is important to regulate it as soon as possible, or at least come up with an effective way to label AI images, be it images used in advertising, AI art, or AI images pretending to be historical ones. I will say there is a lot of fear mongering going on with AI at the moment, and it's all natural when a society is exposed to a new technology that rapidly develops, especially the one that threatens people's jobs, but it's also all fun and games until it starts doing real harm, and it wouldn't hurt to implement some form of security measures. In a world where one in five Americans is a Holocaust denier and people think Picasso lived in the 1500s, it's actually really concerning what they can be led to believe. And the thing is, when money and corporate greed is involved, there is no place for discussion about moral consequences of making fake historical content. I think this is what scares me the most, is that there is no limit to what people will do if it makes them or saves them money. So on that positive note, um, I think that's all. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Bye!